here today with a James White guitar. And this guitar has a name. It's called Black Dog. It was named by the Luthier, who works out in Idaho building guitars. And he's built some absolutely fabulous instruments. But before I get started talking a little bit more about this guitar, I wanted to bring up a subject um, that comes up every once in a while when I'm playing, and that's about the use of a capo. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that only weak players use capos. I've heard, uh, I've actually seen people feel kind of ashamed because they use the capo. I don't, I don't really know why, but they did. They felt like it, it put a stigma of being weak on them, I guess. But the truth of the matter is, the capo is an absolutely wonderful tool. And without it, there's a lot of songs that we listen to today that would have never been written without it. Let me give you an example. Remember the, the song, Here Comes the Sun? Um, that song uses a capo and it's played in the higher register. I don't remember if it was put on the fifth or put on the seventh, but I'm gonna put it on the fifth fret. Listen. You hear that? Now imagine playing that without a capo, what that would have sounded like. It's just not Here Comes the Sun. It doesn't sound right. You have to have a capo to play that. So that's a very good reason to have a capo and to learn how to use it because you might get inspired to play, to actually write a song. You might uh, find that a song you're playing sounds better with it, um, just putting it on, just like that song. Um, it would not sound the same unless somebody had stuck a capo on it and said, let's listen to it up here. So a capo has good reasons, and there's one of them, because some sound, songs just sound better. Um, in fact, when I'm learning a song, I, I play mostly in church, and we play a lot of contemporary Christian music, and um, I'll, I'll learn to play it. I'll sit and practice it, and I'll play it with bar, bar chords. I'll play it with power chords. I'll listen to it. And then I'll try to play it in open chords using a capo. And many times, for instance, the song Praise, I've found that that song, to me, it sounds better to capo it too and play it. It's a 1-4-5 it's a mostly song. Play it in, G, in, you know, in the G chord, starting with the G chord, which gives you the B. It, to me, it just sounds better. Can I play it with... Um, you know, barring, yes, I can, but it doesn't sound the same to me. To me, you get, you get more out of that open chord if you just bar it. So that's just me. So you listen to it, you know, when you're learning uh, to play a song. Listen to how it sounds. And if you feel like it sounds better with the open chord be that you get when you put a capo on, I think it's better to use the capo. The other reason why I like using a capo is sometimes um, when I'm barring a chord, I can't play around it I, if I'm finger picking. I, it's not as easy. I mean, you can do it. You can play around it, bar chording, but it's so much easier. Let's say you're playing a G, which right now I'm capo of two. It gives me, the, I'm in A, really, I'm A. I couldn't do that if I was barring. So, there, there's a reason why the capo is important. It's an important tool to have. So I, I suggest that everybody should have a capo and learn how to use it, learn when to use it, listen to what you're playing, and you know try playing it both ways. Sometimes you'll find that it just sounds better. To me, It there's many of songs that just sounded better, um, especially if I am getting into a really fast, uh, a, hand style strum to me it it just sounds better um now there's a reason why people that are just learning to play the guitar should have a capo 
because you really want to get around other people and play if you only know you know some of the major chords like g c and d and e and e minor and a minor if you have a capo you can play any song because you can change where you're at on the fingerboard and get the key that they're in and use the chords that you know so that's a so yes it's true sometimes if you're a young player um, to have this as a tool so that you can play along with others is a really good reason to have a capo. It's a great tool to have. Um, I have taught different ones and saw that they were, they were so young that they had a hard time reaching up the fingerboard to form their, their, their chords. Now, we could get a smaller guitar, yes, but there's been times that I've said, okay, let's, let's do this, and I, I'll, I'll capo it up to the second fret. Not only does it make the strings easier to push down, but now that child or young person or new player uh, uh, is a little bit closer to their body, making it easier to see what they're doing and practice those chord changes. And when they get more comfortable, then just remove the capo and start playing in the upper register. It's a style of teaching. It's, it's a way, you know. Whether you agree with that or not, it, it, it can be done and it does make it easier for people to learn. So, so the capo, I think it's, uh, it, it's a good one and uh, I think it's a great tool to have. Um, and, you know, if you, if you want to try out something different, play around with it. Listen to your songs when you're playing. Try it in, uh, you know, some songs just sound better when you capo it up. And uh, I think you'll find that uh, it's a great tool don't be afraid to use that. Now, uh, this guitar, let's go back to this guitar. This is James White guitar. Its name is Black Dog. What's special about this instrument is the way that he made it. It has a bracing inside that is fanned here at the base. So it makes this guitar just ring out, but it's not just the bracing, it's the tone woods. This has Brazilian rosewood on the back and the sides. That is a, a wood that is um, hard to find. It's sort of the holy grail of woods for guitar. In fact, it's an endangered species, species wood. So if anybody's working with it, it needs to be reclaimed and a wood and it needs to be, um, to have papers to go with it um, so that, you know, you, you don't get it confiscated. But this is a Brazilian rosewood uh, back and sides and a European alpine spruce top. Has an ebony fingerboard, and you'll notice his headstock. Let me bring it a little bit closer. You'll see his leg logo, and you see this is burl wood that he's used uh, for his design. That's his uh, trademark. You'll see that on all his guitars. And then on the back, um, he laminates it. I believe that's laminated with more black, uh, not black wood, but Brazilian rosewood. So there you have it. Now, as far as the size of this guitar, it's almost a jumbo. In fact, um, if you saw my video yesterday, I showed the Martin M21 and it was a quadruple O. Well, this is sort of the same thing because this is almost 16 inches at the bout and it's a four inch depth. So once again, this guitar feels comfortable to me because the waist uh, is indented so far in. It sits on my knee, it brings the side down, and now I get this real deep sounded guitar because of the size of it. Oh, there's a bare bar chord. James White, Black Dog, and I have an LR Bags pickup in there. I need to uh, hook this up. I, I, I have it drilled to bring it through the inside so you won't see it in the future. Um, these are wonderful magnetic pickups, by the way. Um, they work really well, they have beautiful sound. Well, I hope you have a nice evening or daytime wherever you are in the world and keep on playing your guitar and working at it 
It's a wonderful, wonderful gift to have to be able to play guitar.